What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the All Sports Best Podcast. I'm Trey Gonzalez, and today I'm here with a very special guest, Coach Tom Forney. A um, couple of really cool things have happened recently for Coach Forney. You had the Caveman Corral named after you, which is a huge oh. accomplishment, obviously well-deserved, and I think all of Carlsbad recognizes you for that as a legendary coach. So um, I just thank you for being here on the podcast. Oh, gosh, I, I appreciate it so much for you having me. And let me say one thing about the field being named after me. Hey, there were so many people, my assistant coaches, Coach Click, Coach Groves, Coach Fuentes, Coach Hastings, your dad, I can go on down the list. That's all a part of us in the name of that. Sure. It may say Tom Forney, but the brand is branded by all those people yes, that helped make Cayman baseball what it was. So Absolutely. I was just a small part of that. But I wanted you to know that there were so many people that dedicated themselves to those young men and to the program and they left a legacy along with me, and I believed in them. Mm -hmm. And I love them to this day. And uh, I had some coaches, Woody Smith. Woody was in his 70s or 80s. He loved Cayman baseball. Well, he came out and he became part of the team. And he would pep those kids up. I had another young man, Victor Hightower. He was a student manager. We were out there practicing one Saturday morning. It was 30 degrees. And little Victor came up. He didn't have a jacket. He didn't have anything. And he said, can I help out? And I said, well, the first thing, we got to get you a jacket. <laughs> sure. And Victor became a fixture. I mean, he was part of the team. We had all kinds of personalities. Yeah. But that's what made it really special and great. Just so many different people contributing. Oh. Man, so many people, it, it was unbelievable. I was blessed and, and I welcomed them. And I knew, I was very fortunate in the fact I didn't have a parent per se that was coming out there just for their kids. Mm -hmm. I'll use an example of your dad. Reuben was there for all the kids, not just you and your brother. Sure. And you weren't even on the team and he was out there throwing batting practice to these kids, but he, was out there for all the kids, and, and I, all these people were special in that nature. The word I was not implemented in my program. Yes, it was we and us. So that's why I want the corral to be named. We, Tom Forney, Cayman Corral, and all the people that contributed along the way. Yeah, I love that. It's awesome. Guys, you're listening to the All Sports Best Podcast. Today we're sponsored by Lucky Bull Grill. So a big shout out to Lucky Bull. Coach, um, with everything that's changed in baseball, parents, players, mindsets, things like that, do you think you would want to coach in today's era? Whew, boy, <laughs> it would be a challenge. Uh, things have transpired. Kids have changed. Uh, mm -hmm. Our society has changed drastically in the last 10 or 20 years, and I know there's still a lot of good parents out there, caveman parents, that I see on my Facebook. I keep up with the kids because the parents are involved, and I think I would in a situation if it was like Carl's bath. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But in some situations, I wouldn't even attempt it. Sure. But people love came in baseball here. I mean, it's part of the tradition of this town. You talk about Carlsbad, you're going to talk about came in baseball. And yes, I would. I would I would jump at the chance to try to you know, in this area. And yes, it's a challenge, but you got to realize one thing, the kids always come first. And if you keep that in mind, everything else will dissolve within itself. Yes, sir. But those kids are the number one purpose, and yes, I would do it for them. Okay. Um, with, like, some of the things that we've seen, I mean, it's across college sports, high school sports, Little League, things like that, where parents do sometimes add a little bit more than maybe they should. I wanted to know, because with your tenure, you had six championships, you know, a national title was in that as well. But you had to 
deal with that kind of stuff too, or maybe you didn't. How did you deal with it or get ahead of it in your time? Well, let me tell you this. I was not immune to it. Those parents love their kids. I realized that. You know, and I had to make decisions based on their talent and solely on their talent, not by if they were Hispanic, if they were black, or if they were white. I didn't care if they were polka dot as long as they could play. And Absolutely. the kids knew that. They know, kids know, they're, they're no dummies. And it's just, I don't know, you know, I, uh, I had parents that would confront me and I would try to be as nice and gentlemanly as I could be. But you got to realize one thing, nine of those parents, they like you. But nine of those parents, those kids aren't playing right. and they love their kids. Yes, there's controversy. I understand that. They love their kids. They want them to be out there. Mm -hmm. But what I tried to instill in them is that, hey, I'm going to play my best nine players I have. And that first year I took over, you would not believe what I had to go through. Mm. The first thing I did, I brought ninth graders up and stuff. Okay. That was unheard of. Right. That was, you know, you didn't do that. Hey, my kid's a senior this year and it's his chance to play. Well, that philosophy all changed when I took over. And mm. I told the kids and the parents, and yes, that first year my phone rang off the hook. Oh, I believe it. It was unbelievable. And it was, it was heartbreaking in, in some of the situations because the parents would totally get off the subject and it, it, it became a situation where it was toxic, it was unhealthy. Mm -hmm. But I tried to instill in them their attitude towards caveman baseball will transpire into them. If you're sour, you're going to make your kids sour. Yes. You know, and, and that's one thing that the kids, they fall in. They have a pecking order. That pecking order is based on talent. And you, you'll see, you know, a good coach, he can, he can figure that out. And uh, like I said, I didn't care if they were a ninth grader. If they were better than a senior, they were going to play. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I, I caught all, a multitude of things. And nowadays, I, I, I can't even, I don't even know. I mean, I'm not around it. I don't know how, how the, I see how parents react at games, and it's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, and it's sad to see that. And more and more, we're getting away from discipline. Crowds are getting rowdy. It's getting out of control. Fights are breaking out. Uh, that's no good. Hmm. That's no good for the kids. That's no good for the sport. And it's, it's a reflection of how our society is today, Trey. Hmm. You see it, and I see it. Everybody sees it. And I, I, I don't want good things slipping away. I want to sure. see them keep going. So I, I hope I didn't roundabout answer your question, but yes, I dealt with parents and I tried to be as honest as I could and I love to beat them face to face, not mm -hmm. over the telephone. Sure. And, and uh, a lot of them accepted and they said, yeah, coach, thank you for taking your time. Some of them left very upset, but still, Maya always had an open door policy towards the parents. I did not get involved in the booster club at all. That was not my deal. It was for the kids. I gave them a list and said, if you want to get these for your kids, mm -hmm. it's not for me or none of the coaches, it's for your kids, then this is what we need. Mm -hmm. And that's how I handled the booster club. So I had very little to do yeah, with the booster club. Right? Yeah. I, I, I isolated from it because uh, I'd coached football for 30 years and I went to yeah. booster club meetings. We were required Tuesday night for booster, football booster club meetings. 
and it, it got ridiculous. It got out of control. Mm. People were yelling and screaming. Really? Yeah, and uh, I said, no, I'm, I'm not going to allow this to happen in my program, you know. So, <clears throat> you know, and you learn through experience, you know, you learn, and I made mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes, but I'm willing to admit it, and I uh, always tried to do better sure. and correct myself. But, yeah, I made a lot of mistakes along the way, and I learned along with the kids. I love those kids. Yeah. I think about those kids, and if I was just a small part of instilling in them some basic principles about life, sure. then it's all worth it. Yes, sir. And from, the, from what I've heard and talking to players, from all throughout your time there, I've heard a lot of great things on what they learned, you know, the discipline and things like that. I wanted to talk a little bit about the discipline part of things um, yes, for players, you know. Obviously, you with the amount of time that you coached for the cavemen, there's going to be things that happen, whether it's on the field or off the field. How did you deal with, say, you know, a, a kid, I don't know, getting tossed from a game or something like that? What would you... How would you come back and say, we need to learn a lesson from this? Well, unfortunately, in all the years I coached, not any of my kids got tossed. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. But, uh, you know, emotions are high and everything, but they have to be controlled. And uh, I, I've seen... Uh, I've seen, even when I was coaching, Trey, and we would go to different communities, mm. man, some, some of the parents were just vile and, and out of control, and, and the kids were out of control. And the coach, he just sort of let everything wow. go, you know, and it was sad to watch. You know, and a lot of those kids could really be good athletes, but th there was no leadership. Sure. You know, and uh, man, I I don't know, Trey, you know. Sure. What about, and I, I'd actually heard a couple of stories, and I don't know the specifics on them, but where there would be, you know, an athlete that maybe got, um, you know, arrested or something off of the field, oh, and yeah. you would say, you know what, you're gone. You're off the team, whatever that might be, um, which has to be a pretty tough decision to make, but... Did you have like a, you cross this line, you have to be off the team oh, because- Oh yeah, most definitely there's consequences. And uh, they know, they knew, and, and kids are kids. I grew up in this town. I know everything right. that goes on. I know over every place. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, high school kids, they're gonna go out and drink on the weekend. And I told them, hey, Fellas, you cannot do that. You you cannot. I said, if you get arrested, there's a policy that we follow. You're gone. Sure. And yes, I had kids that I had to kick off the team that hurt us drastically. Great mm -hmm. players. I'm not going to mention names. Sure. But yes, I had to kick them off the team, and, and they knew. You don't cross that line, and you have to have that. You, you, you know, you can't. That's what every everything has, has happened is we bend rules, we bend this, we bend that. Mm. And you have to set some principles, I think, and you have to stick with those principles. And yes, and those kids came to me later and they said, Coach, I am so sorry. I learned a heck of a lesson. Yeah. You know, and I said, man, I, we just both broke down and started crying because of all the time that he could have had planned. Sure over something stupid. And yes, I, I uh, definitely handled it. Uh, if kids were late for practice, they had to run the loop. Mm -hmm. That's a five mile that. run. Mm -hmm. and Uphill then, and yeah, hilly and downhill. They come back and then they start in with the practice. But if they were late, there were no exceptions except emergencies like family emergencies. Yes, there were exceptions. Mm -hmm. But as far as I overslept and this and that, and that, 
the culprits were usually the same because they'd come in, they were still half asleep, and I'd sure. say, tennis shoes, boys, <laughs> they'd head yeah. out on the loop, and when they come back, they were wide awake. Mm -hmm. But it's just the way I ran things, and, and uh, you know, I incorporated a lot of things that I had the great privilege of first of all having a great college coach and then coming back to Carlsbad I got to work under Dave Perini, Richard Matson, and Gary Whittemore mm. and all three of them had specialties in their area. Dave Perini was the best motivator I've ever seen in my life. He can make a young man run through that wall over there and feel like he was Superman. Okay. He was unbelievable motivator. Rich Matson, I worked for him. Greatest technician in the game I've ever seen. I learned so much. His technician and uh, the, the way that we played the game, and he was so knowledgeable in hitting, fielding, everything. Coach Whittemore, great pitching coach. Mm. I mean, I got to work with all three of these guys and I got their knowledge and I consumed as much as I could because I was an assistant here 15 years before I oh, became I a head that. coach. Yeah. 15 years, wow. 15 years. I started off, Dave Perini hired me as a assistant JV baseball coach and uh, just, I worked up, you know, and the job would come open and I'd say, no, it's I'm not ready, you know. This guy deserves it, and and we sort of had a pattern, and all of us took our turn. And when mm. when uh, I took over, uh, I ch I changed things dramatically. I'm not gonna lie to you. It was it was a, it was a cultural shock to the kids, to the parents. It, it was uh, it was based on hard work. We're gonna work hard, fellas. We're lunch pail. We're yeah. blue collar workers. That's the attitude I instilled in them. And man, we went to work from day one. And I mean, it was work and it was, and we had a lot of fun along the way. When you win, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And the kids, it became a deal where kids wanted to be a Cayman baseball player. Mm -hmm. That's something that is still going on great in this town. I love it, man. Kids want to be a Cayman baseball player. And I think that's great. And, and uh, it, it, it's just a tradition here that's, uh, that's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And all the kids that have gone on and what they did, you know, three kids made it to the show, but there were Brian Halls that played at Stanford. Yeah. Brian Flores, Arizona State. You know, I can go on, I can't remember all of them, but there's 30. Sean Allen played for me. He's the assistant pitching coach for the University of Texas now. Mm. He's the pitching coach. Wow, I coach. didn't know that. Yeah. That's awesome. There's, there's guys uh, all over that are coaches that are highly successful that went through this program. Mm. And like I said, it's a tribute to so many people. So many coaches, so many good parents, so many good kids. Uh, I was just blessed. Sure. You know, and it never was I, it's we. Mm -hmm. I want everybody to rem remember this. In this whole deal, it was we. It was so many people that, that were involved that made this a success. And like I said, it may be Tom Forney, Caveman Corral, but their heart and soul's right there with me in that field, I'll guarantee you. Yes, sir. Because they laid it all out on the line for those kids. Mm -hmm. With you saying that hard work was the base of your program, I mean, it was, it was all about that. Well, work ethic, yes, but <clears throat> in your work ethic, you have to be where you know you're doing hard work, but it's for things that are proper that are going to make you better. I mean, I could, I've could i seen coaches take kids after they lose a, a game and run them for about 30 minutes because they lost. And I'm sitting there going to myself, man, why aren't they setting these kids down telling them, hey, 
we got to work on this element of the game. We got to yes. do this element. Mm -hmm. Running wasn't going to help them. Absolutely not. No. I mean, it was the most stupid thing I've ever seen in my life. And I've right. seen coaches over and over and over and do that. When we got beat, man, the first thing I told the kids, hey, we got beat. But we're going to go back to work tomorrow, and I'm going to go home tonight, and I'm going to study what happened. And we're going to go over those situations that we messed up on, and we're going to get them corrected mm -hmm. before we went on. And that's the way I handle that situation. Sure. You know? And like I said, a lot of old school coaches just ran them. Yeah. And, and to me, excuse me, that's just, that's just a waste of time. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, uh, you better believe our program was based on very, very hard work. I mean, mm -hmm. it, a lot of kids came out, and it wasn't for them. You know, they uh -uh, it was too hard. But the kids, after that first year, was tough. The second year, we won state. And the parents teased off. Third year, parents were gone. Mm. You know, it, yeah. it, I, I didn't have the headaches I had for the first year, and I knew it, it was going to transpire because I had, I had changed the dynamics of the whole program. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it was a change to the people because their son was a junior or senior, and it was their turn to play. And that's not the way I handled things. Right. You know, yeah. I said, hey. The best kids, my best nine, I'm going to put out there. Sure. I had a situation one year. I had a young man. He was the best second baseman I ever had. I didn't have a center fielder. I had a kid out there that could play second base, but he couldn't play center field. So I called him in and I said, I'm going to move you to center field. And he, he sort of put his head down, and I said, it's for the team. He said, Coach, for the team, I'll do it. It's awesome. And the kid that went to center field, played second base, we won the state championship. Mm. But, it, it you know, you have to. Kids would come in and say, I'm going to play this. Right. And when they finished, they weren't in the position that they started out in. A lot of them were, but no, man. Like when Shane, when I had him as a freshman, you know what he played for me? He was our catcher. Really? He was our catcher. I did not know that. As a ninth grader. A ninth grader, he was my catcher. And that was full-time starting catcher. Full-time wow. starting catcher. Shane Andrews. He was my I didn't my, know that. Yeah. It was crazy, but okay. the, the situation we had, I had to have him catching. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you... You tell people that, and you go, you're kidding me. I don't know. I had no idea. No, yeah. he caught. Shane caught. He could play anywhere. He was just a great athlete. Sure. And, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. So that's the way but, that went. Sure. So, I mean, so you take the, the way that you discipline and the way that you work hard and, and you funnel it towards being great and, and winning and, and, and making these young men into men. Um, there you go. That's the most important thing you just said. The winning, yeah, it's okay. But no, the life skills yes. that they learned from this program, that was the thing that I wanted them to do. When they go out and they have a family and they don't want to get out of bed and they got to go to work, but they remember caveman baseball, grind, yeah. get my tail out of bed, I got to go to work, I got a family. Mm -hmm. And those things, I think, really help them and instill them life skills along the way. And all of them, a lot of highly successful men in business, all kinds, yeah. coaches, all walks of life. And I think, I hope, I pray that some of the skills they learn, the life skills, they carried on with them. Sure. And I, think, the I think if you don't, play sports or aren't around sports, you don't really get the full scope of what it can really do for you down the road. You know, you see all the hard work and it's, oh man, this is tough. And man, there's gotta be something that comes of it. And then you see success and you're like, wow, this is, so if I work hard, there's success. Right. It's, it's, it's really that simple sometimes. I think it's hard. lost a lot of times. It's time. a simple formula, you know, and like you said, if, if they can experience that, 
it's a it's a really great experience mm. and uh, you know sure I wanted them to be successful in baseball they wanted to be so but man the beauty part of the whole thing I'll tell you Trey is kids come back yeah <laughs> come back and see me sure. <laughs> and hug me and say coach thank you so much mm -hmm. That's yes. what it's all about. Yes, sir. I can't help it. I'm sorry. No, absolutely. I understand. It's, just, it's, in, my, it's sure. in my heart. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, with the way that, you know, we kind of described how things go in, in practice and games and things like that, and we talk, you talked about running athletes just because they lost or things like that. I think that there's a difference between running them just to run them and punish them and running them for other reasons, right? You said the loop was one of the things for being late. Um, well, did you ever do anything like, guys, if we make X amount of mistakes in practice or we're being lazy, drop your gloves, get on the line? Was that something that, because to me that could also be yeah. a way to learn a lesson as well, or did you <coughs> skip no, that? Uh, we didn't drop our gloves and get on the line. But they'd take 50 more ground balls. Okay. They'd take 75 more flies until we got it right. Mm -hmm. They didn't get on no line. They were out there working on those skills that we need to work on. Yeah. No, I, I, I just didn't believe in that, you know. And we conditioned. Oh, my, my kids were in great shape. Yes, and <laughs> that's for sure. We, we, we conditioned, but it was not a punishment deal at all. It was to make us better, but no. We got right back out there and got right back out where we made that mistake, and we're going to get that corrected. Mm -hmm. Getting on the line isn't going to make me feel that gallon ball correctly. 100%. See? That's it true. still goes that's... back to the same thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, same principles still work right. today, absolutely. Sa same principle, you know, and, and uh, I uh, I know coaches get frustrated. I used to get frustrated, but dad, gum, you know, you you know, I'd, I'd sit there and I'd say, hey, man, these kids are giving their all. They're trying their best. And I'm over here frustrated. Shoot, I ought to be happy, man. It's true. And and uh, a good way to look at I it. don't know. I, I just uh, I was very calm during the games. I I, uh, I yeah. If I needed to get some fire in their tail, I did it. Mm -hmm. You better believe I'd get right in the middle of them. But uh, as far as a yeller and screamer and holler, no, mm -hmm. I, I didn't do that. You know, they had enough pressure on them as it was, without some idiot hollering at them and do this, do that. Sure. You know? Yeah, 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 no, for sure. <laughs> and I had parents that were hollering at their kids, telling them to do that. And I go, please be quiet. Just, <laughs> yeah. just let, let them Let me play. do my thing, exactly. Yeah, let them yeah. do their thing. Yes, sir. Um, you mentioned three athletes that went pro. Right. Um, and that's to the big league level, because that's not mentioning draft picks. Right. That's not mentioning college, Division right. One things like that. Shane Andrews, Cody Ross. And Paxton, Paxton Crawford. Crawford. Okay. Yeah. Those so three. do you have any stories of these athletes like, you know, because Shane and Paxton played together? Was that in the same era? Yeah, they okay. were in the same era in fact. And then I'll get back to what you were saying, but Shane and Paxton uh, at one point were on the same minor league team. Oh, were they? Okay. And and uh, it was pretty neat because they, they were telling me the story Shane was. But, uh, wow. It's unbelievable, you know, and, and uh, what was the question again? So with those, do you have any stories about these oh, guys, you know, coming up? Or? Well, you know, first of all, I'm going to say this. They're, they were three great men, first of all, and they were leaders. They led by example and they led by talent. But your leaders are going to be your most talented athletes usually, not always. I right. had some leaders, hey, some of them didn't, weren't even in the starting lineup, but the kids respected them as a leader. Sure. So you have to earn that respect, and all three of those guys did that. They weren't cocky. Shane was down to earth. Paxton, 
he moved in from Arkansas and he's just an old country boy mm. and, and he was in a big city in Carlsbad and, oh, wow. and, and uh, I, I got to tell you a story about Paxton, the uh, Boston Red Sox scout was there and uh, I was telling him about Paxton. He said, well, let him throw off the mound. And I said, okay. And uh, I said, how hard does he have to throw for you to sign him? And he says, 91. Mm. I said, okay, Paxton, can you throw 91? Paxton <laughs> was hitting 94, 93, 92. That scout said, I'll sign him. Wow. So that that's how that transpired. Mm -hmm. and, and and Paxton wasn't even one of my top pitchers that wow, year. Wow, really? No, I had Preston Ballou, Tim Perry. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I was loaded. Yeah. And one one college coach came down uh, from Dallas Baptist, and he was looking at Preston, and he saw Perry. He saw he saw all my Perry. He said, "I'll take every one. I want really? every one of them." So he offered all of them. Oh, he offered all wow. of them. Of course, they didn't. They signed and stuff, but it was amazing. And they weren't cocky kids. They were good no. kids. Kids loved them. Cody, he was, he had a lot of fire in him, man. And he wasn't a very big kid. And the scouts would come in. They go, man, he's just, he's too small. And mm. I go, he's a dynamite. I said, let's watch, it. let him hit. You know, and I. I was different than a lot of coaches. A lot of coaches would not let the pro scouts, they would, they just had to watch practice, but I practiced and then I said, what do you want to see right. him do? Give him the best opportunity. And I gave them the best opportunity. I set that coach down on the field. He said, hit him some ground balls. He said, throw batting practice. I must have threw 800 pitches oh. one day to Cody. <laughs> yeah. And that scout just, and finally I said, well, have you had enough? And he said, I want to see him hit the ball to right field. Wow. So here we go. You almost had to start throwing lefty. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so anyway, we did that. But <clears throat> That's crazy. He, uh, he ended up going in the fourth round. Mm -hmm. Cody did, which is really, really good. Yes. And he was the smallest guy that they took. And you saw what he did. Yeah, I mean, he became. He, oh, he was amazing. Uh, he was tremendously strong for a little guy. We'd get in the weight room, and and Shane, Shane never lifted a weight in his life. And that one day, the kid, the kids, I think, put like 300 pounds on there. I was not in there yet, and they said, Coach, he just took that and just. <laughs> Did that, and everybody in the, in the weight room, the football players, yeah, everybody were in awe. You know, he just sort of got up and walked off, yeah. you know. And he was strong as an ox, man. Well, and I heard that he, so he could hit the ball a mile, had a great arm, strong, could dunk. I mean, he had every tool for every sport. He was, he, he was a great athlete, and, <laughs> and the thing is, and I got accused of this over and over, telling kids just to play baseball. That was the biggest malarkey. Mm. After my season was over, I told them, boys, get your swimming trunks on, get your fishing pole, get out of here, relax, enjoy yourself. Well, a lot of them had to go directly into football, and I did too. I oh, was yeah, a football you were coaching. coach. Yeah. yeah. So summertime, <laughs> It was football practice out there, you know, and a lot of the kids, they were playing football and then they'd go and play summer league baseball or oh, yeah. whatever. Yeah. But uh, the hard part was basketball mm. because it overlapped and the games were started and Shane was great. And I said, Shane, it's up to you. And he, first of all, his dad wasn't going to let him do it. No way, shape or form. I knew that. But he would have been a great basketball player, yeah. and it wouldn't have hurt him at all. But no, he, his dad was definitely against that. Sure. So anyway, they were great athletes, you know, and they were great people. They led by example, and 
I have nothing but great things to say about them, and, and uh, I was fortunate enough to get to coach them, you know, and, yeah. and be a part of it. I knew uh, Shane was special in the ninth grade. We were, I got to tell you a story on Shane. In the ninth grade, Shane looked like he was 35. <laughs> he had a full beard. Wow. Well, we were playing over in El Paso, and <laughs> Shane hit a a home run and he hit it over the freeway over this wow. field and he was trotting around you know and mm. the coach from El Paso he walked over there and he said coach how old is that kid and I said he's a freshman that's insane <laughs> and that coach said hell he looks like he's 35 <laughs> years old yeah. well I had to tell that story but yeah he, he was just a man mm -hmm. he was a man when he was a freshman it was wow. just good genes. Yeah. When these guys were in the big leagues, did they come back oh. and, 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 and get some BP in on the field, things oh, like that? Oh, let me tell you what they did. I opened up the field. I said, I want you to teach them everything you guys have learned. And they'd get out there and they work with the kids. That's awesome. Man, I didn't shut them out. I said, I want you out here. You get your tail out here. Let's teach these kids what mm -hmm. you learned. And they'd get out there, and the kids loved it. Yeah. You know, so they didn't forget where they came from. That was the neat thing mm -hmm. on that. Well, and I remember really when I was, like, when I was playing in high school, sometimes Cody Cody would come back. Right. And, and he'd, he'd have, like, four or five bats and just, here you go. You know, just, right. you guys want to swing them, you know. Oh, we were swinging medals, but that was like the coolest thing. Oh, they would they they would give batting gloves, baseballs, gloves. Yeah, they, it was amazing. Crazy. They didn't forget where they came from, and it just swelled my heart. I felt so good that hey, these guys didn't forget. They they loved these kids. They loved this program, mm -hmm. you know. And and uh, it, it's known now. This program is known. Absolutely. I'll guarantee 100%. you. You you mentioned Carlsbad came in baseball and hey, they've heard of it. Mm -hmm. You know, and these kids are the reason that's happening. Like I said, uh, Sean Allen coaching at the University of Texas, pitching coach. Uh, Kevin Lawman, he went into Texas and he started out at the J C level and he's I forget the last I heard he was going to some big college as the head coach and, and these kids were a part of this program. Yeah. And it, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It really is. And, and I, I have been in ill health and I, I got to go catch a couple of games this year and I loved it. It's Cayman baseball. We have a new wow. coach. I love him. He, oh, yeah. Uh, He's, he's going to be fine, you know. Uh, I think he's going to work the kids hard. And, and uh, I'm just glad he came to Carlsbad. He's been highly successful everywhere he's been. And, mm -hmm. man, they, they did a heck of a job this year, man. I mean, the turning point for them is when they were in that Albuquerque tournament and they played that one team down to the wire. We got beat. But then we went to state, and man, we were right in there with the big boys. We right. lost right at the last, but nothing to be ashamed of. Those kids played their heart out, and they improved so much during the year. It was amazing to watch that. Mm -hmm. so, and the first year sets the tone, like you said. Oh, you had this culture shock, but once you show it a little bit of success, it catches fire a little bit. Things, things will fall into place, mm -hmm. and yeah. Uh, and I, I don't know anymore. I sort of lost contact. You know more about this. Do these kids play year-round now? A lot of them do. A lot they of them play summer ball and then a little fall ball. Fall ball and then mm -hmm. get in the regular season. So they're, uh, man, uh, they're playing a lot of baseball. They are. And that's actually something I was going to ask you about was usage. Like, um, for a long time, there was not a pitch count, like, set rule in high school where, hey, you can only right. throw 90 pitches and you have to rest, things like that, right? right. It was like, well, if you throw, you, you can throw? Well, no. Now, when you went to state, I forget exactly how it was set up, but there was a pitch Oh, there was camp. a threshold? Yes. Okay. That stayed in the state tournament. Okay. So what I did a lot of times and I got away with it is like I chose throw Shane three innings in the first game. 
and if we were five or six, I'd get him out of there. And then in the championship game, I'd have him for four innings if we needed him. Yeah. And and against Farmington one year, we did need him. Mm -hmm. But that's that there there was a pitch count, but. During the regular season, no, you know, but we we had a pitch count. You know, if if they got at 80 pitches, hey, that was it. I was going to yeah. get them out of there, and and I had kids throw 60 pitches in games, a full seven inning wow. game. You know, I wanted them to throw Just strikes. Attack. Yeah, yep. we attacked. I'd, a constant attack. Mm -hmm. We didn't waste pitches. We were coming after you. I like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because I've heard a lot of things, you know, the most successful programs like Carlsbad, um, you know, you've got to manage your pitchers throughout because if you overuse them at the beginning, the end of the year, they're, they're kind of gassed they're out. They're shot. Yeah. yeah. You, 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 uh, and <clears throat> pitching to me was one of the most critical things there is. Yeah. What controls the game? The pitcher does. Mm -hmm. And Man, I had Ray Landers. I had Coach Whittemore. I mean, and then I worked with the pitchers the last couple of years. But pitching was the number thing we were going to do in the bullpen, and we were going to bear down. And there was going to be a coach in there. Mm -hmm. You can't send kids in there and not have a coach Absolutely. and say bear down. Sure. I've seen coaches do that, and it was ridiculous. Kids were, they were getting worse. Mm -hmm. Man, I mean, we that charted. Happens. We charted their pitches in practice. Man, you throw so many balls and strikes, and hey, you, we got to work on this. And, mm -hmm. and yes, it was all charted. It was, it was you got pretty to, intense. Yeah, for sure. Um, for you, if just kind of in your own words, what is it to be a Carlsbad caveman? Man, I grew up as a caveman here. This is my hometown, and it means everything to me. You know, I uh, I just always wanted to be a caveman. Uh, my dad would take me to the games, and I said, Dad, I want to be a caveman. Yeah. You know, and I played three sports in high school. Wasn't very good, but I played, and I loved every minute of it. And I was fortunate enough to get to come back to Carlsbad to my hometown and be a part of this, you know, and, and uh, God has just blessed me, Trey. Yes, sir. You know, and, and uh, like I said, I get emotional, mm. but I have so many great memories and, and uh, just a part of my life. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I appreciate you being here, Coach. Thank you so very much, man. Yes, sir. I had a, I had one more thing I wanted to talk to you about was I talked to Coach McGaha. He was on a podcast a couple weeks back. Okay. And one of the things he remembers about he played for Farmington High, right? There was a rivalry, Farmington oh, Carlsbad. Man, yeah. It was big. Yeah. Um, El Dorado might have been in the conversation as well. Was that El Dorado? Right. Maybe the top three programs. Mm -hmm. um, Tom McLemore, right. he was your roommate in college. Right. So can you tell me a little, speak to that a little bit, the rivalry that formed well, after you guys were teammates? Dad gummit. <laughs> we were both real intense, and I don't know what happened. Things happened during the game, and, and he started yelling, and I started yelling back, which was wrong. And But over the years, we made amends. We loved each other, but uh -huh. it was intensity. Yeah. And and man, you know, you're you're scratching and clawing at state for everything you got. Two great programs mm -hmm. are going at each other. Two coaches that were roommates. Yeah. <laughs> and you want to beat that? him bad. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was crazy, you know. Yeah, we were roommates in college and and uh man, uh What was college ball like for y'all? Oh, let me tell you what. It was it was great. I uh I had great success in college, and, and the reason I did, I had great coaches. I had one coach, Scotty Childress. He was in the Indian organization, and mm. he taught me so much about the mental game of hitting 
and playing the game. You know, I would go out there and practice and stuff, but as far as really knowing the game, studying the game, learning, learning the technique, the basic things of hitting and stuff, and he was great at it. And, and uh, man, he taught me so much that I got to carry on to these kids. And I got to play four years of college ball. I was a starter as a freshman. I wasn't a starter right away. Our center fielder, who was an All-American, broke his arm in the game. Oh, wow. And here I go in the game as a freshman, and everything went good yeah. after that. So That's awesome. It was a great four years, and uh, man, like I said, it's baseball's been my life. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and yeah. uh, football, basketball. I coach football, basketball, and baseball in Carlsbad for I coached basketball for eight years. You know? I didn't know that either. Oh, wow. yeah. Okay. So I've coached all of them. Yeah. I loved every bit of it. I love the competition. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, Coach, I want to say thank you from me. Uh, I didn't play for you at the varsity level, but I got a chance to play college ball. And one of the reasons that I had that opportunity was because of the program that you Gosh, made so, you so important. Much. So. I thank appreciate that. You. Well, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thank you so. for having me. Yes, sir. I hope I didn't bore people. No, you're phenomenal. And I've got, I mean, heck, I got millions of questions to ask you. I, yeah. Actually, the last thing, and sorry if I keep extending. No. Um, working out was huge for you. That was something that whenever I went when I was younger, even through um, some of my high school years, we'd go early mornings trying, you know, Get an edge, yeah. and you'd always be there early morning, 6 a.m., maybe earlier. What? what? Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Okay, because I was going to say, be getting close to done when we'd get there, and I was like, we're here early. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. No, I uh, I don't know. You know, when when I went to college, well, let me say this. When I, when I graduated from high school, I weighed 155 pounds from my... Freshman year, or my senior year in high school to my freshman year in college, when I went out for baseball, I weighed 190 pounds. Really? And I put on 45 pounds of muscle. And it was just through hard work and stuff. And, and man, I, it, everything improved so much. I mean, because I was weak, mm -hmm. and it, it became an obsession with me. It really did. But I saw the results, and I said, man, I I'm going to keep doing this. And here I am, 75, and I'm still lifting my weights. I'm yes, in sir. a chair, and I get on my redundant bike and do my nine miles every day. But Love it. I'm battling. Nine miles. That's yes, solid. Sir. In 40 solid. minutes. That's With sake of a workout. To, to add 45 pounds of muscle, is that two-a-days? How, how, well, how did that happen? The first thing is my nutrition was okay. ungodly. I mean, I'm, my protein level and intake was unbelievable. And I just wanted to eat and eat. And I was ready. I was, I was still a, a boy in high school. And then, man, between that year, I became a man. Yeah. I just developed no doubt. into a man, and um, it just happened, you know. And and uh, but I love working out. It's it's a way that man. It's just it relieves everything in me. I feel good about myself after I did it. That I accomplished something, and I wanted to instill that feeling into those kids mm -hmm. and and the. The, how much they could improve. I'd have kids come in there, they couldn't even lift the bar. And by their senior year, man, they're pumping 230, 240, like, you know, and just, it's amazing. It was yeah. amazing to watch the growth, and it was a big part of our program. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and something that a lot of people might not have known was that you worked out with the players sometimes, you ran the loop with oh, the players, 5.2. Most definitely, every Saturday, the losers, I was on the loop with them. Wow. I mean, hey, I wanted to, them to know that, hey, I'm right there with you, and we're going to get this done. 
Mm -hmm. And I think that meant a lot to the kids to Thanks see so a too. coach do that. Mm -hmm. You know, if, you, if you're going to talk the talk, you better walk the walk. I agree. And that was my philosophy. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That was, yeah, that's big time. Six, eight championships. Um, was there one to you that was stood out to you? You know, they were all great. But the one that... that stuck in my heart the most was we had won the state championship and the person that gave the trophy to us was Coach Boyer. He was my coach in high school, a great coach. And that, uh, I don't know, that just really touched me from mm -hmm. one generation to another yeah. of Cayman. Yes, sir. And he was there and he presented the trophy to us and that was Really special. Sure. Really, really special. Yes, sir. Well, Coach, I appreciate you spending your time here with me today. Thank you. It was a great interview. I, I, uh, I do appreciate that. Hey, it's just from my heart. Yes, sir. You know, that's the only way I know how to go. Yes, sir. And thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. Thank you guys for watching All Sports Best, sponsored by Lucky Bull Grill, Coach Tom Forney.